Do you remember these? Maybe you still have one. Maybe you think they're just a relic of the pre-2000s world with no place in today's home. I think they're still pretty neat, and I can think of a few uses beyond just being a phone that you may want to consider. You don't even need an actual landline for a couple of them. I won't be going into a lot of history or deep technical details in this video, but if you're interested in any of that history or a deeper dive into how phones work, let me know in the comments. I had to restrain myself in writing this video, so I'd be all too happy to talk about step-by-step -step switching systems and all the different telephone signals, how they're generated and how they're used. But for now, I'll spare those who haven't the slightest interest in such things and just cover the practically useful stuff. My house has some inconvenient features. It's a split level and it's quite long in one direction. This presents all kinds of interesting infrastructure challenges, but one of the biggest drawbacks is that when I'm in my shop, which is in the far side of the basement garage, my wife usually has to walk quite a distance to be within hearing range to ask me a question. While she's not opposed to getting a few steps in, it can be inconvenient when she has our grandchildren or has her hands in the garden outside. How does the humble house phone solve this problem? Well, by doing exactly what it was designed to do, be a communications device. So, obviously I'm talking about using these phones as an internal intercom system of sorts, and you might be thinking, why not just use your cell phone? And the answer to that is somewhat subjective. I think not sending a signal out of the house and back is more straightforward, and plain old telephones are just neat. You could also use walkie-talkies, and we've tried that at our old house, but there are a lot of advantages the phones have over walkie-talkies. Of course, you could buy a purpose-specific intercom, but again, these phones have other advantages I'll cover as we proceed, and they're just so cool. Let's start with talking about how to use these phones without a phone line. There are a few ways, but the simplest is to get yourself one of these, an analog PBX, or private branch exchange. This one runs about $75, affiliate link in the description, and it's incredibly easy to set up and operate. Simply plug your phones into the extension jacks, plug in power, and you can pick up and dial extensions. The really great thing about this for me is that when I'm in my shop, I might be running a tool or have music on, so the telephone, which is designed to get your attention in noisy conditions, is already ideal for this use case. But what if you don't want to run long wires all over the place? Well, I didn't run wires anywhere. I just bought these cordless phones for around $20 to $25 each. Again, link in the description. This one even came with a built-in answering machine that I actually use to leave myself notes in the shop. You can even access the messages from the handset, which is super neat. You can also plug a regular PSTN or landline into the PBX and by default just dial 9 to reach the outside line and use the phone normally. You can turn off the dial 9 feature pretty easily as well. I'm not going to dive into the configuration settings in this video because it's pretty useful right out of the box, but if you think that that stuff might be interesting, again, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can find time to do a deep dive. I will be taking one apart in a future video, but I'll get to that shortly. In addition to using this PBX with a landline, you can also do something else interesting with it. This is an ATA, or analog telephone adapter, for converting an old analog set into a voice over IP phone, and you can set it up a lot of different ways. This one I'm using with another digital PBX. I could use multiple of these, or a larger gateway, and not even bother with the analog PBX, but again, I like the direct analog connections for reliability, and I have other tricks I'm doing with the digital PBX. This is my digital PBX. Looks a lot like an old laptop, doesn't it? Well, it's a PBX. It's running a Linux distro specifically pre-built with Asterisk and Free PBX to allow me to connect my SIP trunk and have things like IVR, or Interactive Voice Response. This is all free except for the phone number and SIP trunk, which at present costs me under $5 a month. So what is a SIP trunk? Well, SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol, and all that's really important is that it's a digital communication protocol that allows you to send end-to-end -end streaming data. It's a digital phone line with some extra features like video calling if you want to dig into that stuff, which I don't at the moment because I don't have the need. The cost varies from provider to provider, and it gets kind of complicated when you start talking about SIP to PSTN calls versus SIP to SIP, international calling, and so on, but my cost basically boils down to about a third of a cent per minute, plus a dollar a month for my 800 number, which is where my IVR lives. 
You can set up extensions in the digital PBX that act like the extension ports on the analog PBX, but you can also set up things like special ring groups that only ring certain phones under certain conditions, you can create calling queues, which gets a bit more complex, and you can set up IVRs, which out of the box only accept dial pad input, but that's really all you need in my opinion. You can get surprisingly complex with these, but for my experimental environment, I've just made a simple menu system with recordings for the various options. If you'd like to test my IVR, you can call 1-855-701-DUDE or 1-855-701-3833. Operators are standing by. Somewhere, I'm sure. If the call volume exceeds my budget, it will simply offline the system and you'll get a message or a failed connect signal. So if that happens, I'm surprised that many people called. So this seems very novel, but there are two reasons I have this set up. One is to experiment for an actual system I'm building for a business with some unique needs, and two is to have an outbound IVR. If you dial 601 through 608, the analog PBX will ring the appropriate extension port here. If you dial 1011, because I have dial 9 turned off, it will send that through the line to the ATA and on to the digital PBX, which recognizes it as one of its extensions and connects through a routing rule to another IVR I have set up that has options to call my cell phone, my wife's cell phone, our son's cell phones, or conference call all of them for an emergency. Probably overkill, but it's there. The other thing you can do inside this IVR is connect to the second line on the ATA. This line goes to a designated phone that I'm building a special IoT device for. You can connect web hooks and do API tricks with the digital PBX, but not without licensing it yearly or doing a lot of digging around and custom coding. So I'm doing something a little different. This is an MT8870 chip and timing circuit for reading DTMF or dual tone multi-frequency signals. That means it will convert an analog telephone button press into a digital address that I can read with a Raspberry Pi Pico W to control, well, anything I want. I could connect this line directly to an analog PBX, but since the digital PBX can send dial signals as well, I can send complex commands from an IVR menu by having it dial the extension, wait for a second, then dial complex commands so the user doesn't need to know the full command sequence or even connect directly to it. I haven't built that device yet, so it's entirely possible that I may fail, but that's something you'll have to wait for the next video or two to find out. In the next video, unless I do a small one in between, I plan to tackle building the analog DTMF IoT controller. If you'd like to see a video on the full installation and setup of the free PBX machine, let me know in the comments. Sorry I'm saying that a lot, but how else are you going to tell me? I admit this whole phone system is a bit novel, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and who knows what other uses I may find along the way. If you set this up entirely on the analog PBX, you wouldn't have the IVR menu system, but it would still be neat to pick up an old telephone, dial a number or two, and see lights come on, shades open, or anything else you can make your smart home do. I'll try to get the next video together in a timely fashion, but it may be a few weeks as I'm still building all kinds of things for other people, which I love, but is very time consuming. This channel is still one of my favorite things, so rest assured I have no plans on abandoning it in the foreseeable future. There is one more thing that's coming up that I think might interest you. Because I'm involved in projects in other states, my wife and I decided to get a travel trailer, which I will of course be modifying in all sorts of ways. So there will definitely be videos on the road and videos of mobile smart home stuff. Well, thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring and building smarter circuits.